This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and in this video we're going to talk about one final aspect of SQL databases, which is avoiding SQL injection. Over the course of this series, we've talked a lot about encrypting passwords in order to protect your player's access credentials to your database. However, we also want to talk about this idea of SQL injection and how it protects your database itself. Um, today we're just going to be talking about one part of protecting your database by sanitizing inputs. However, there's also another big step called PHP Data Objects, or PDO, that I really encourage you to find additional tutorials or research on. Um, it gets a little bit more advanced than this series is about, but it's another really important step, especially if you have a much broader reaching game. So basically how SQL injection works is that every SQL query we make is a string. And we're currently building these strings by kind of com combining two different types of strings. There are user input strings that are kind of the parameters we're taking or putting into these uh, form fields, as well as hard-coded strings, the commands that actually kind of make up the syntax of the SQL query. Now, MySQL queries use a really strict structure, so a bad actor could relatively easily figure out probably how we're structuring the queries that we're making, and then could use an unfiltered string, like say our username, for example, to insert their own queries. This is basically done by saying, instead of taking, you know, just saying the input being, say, the username, you could suddenly end the command that we were intentionally making, insert your own command, and then just kind of let the query run and the damage gets done. So in order to prevent this, we need to actually scrub any player inputs for those dangerous characters, ones that can be used to make SQL queries. We could do this in Unity. We could go into each of our input fields, and we could say for content type, instead of standard, we could say something like alphanumeric to ensure that people can only use um, letters and numbers, and therefore they couldn't put in the different like semicolons and characters that would need to be used for an SQL query. However, this isn't foolproof. One of the big problems with this is that we still have this layer where we're accessing the database through this PHP page, and if someone were able to get into our scripts and find the URL for that, they could relatively easily make their own form, send it to this URL, and still cause trouble by sending bad code to the server itself. So we really want to check this once it actually reaches the server using PHP. Unfortunately, that's relatively easy to do. PHP gives us a couple of handy tools that we can use to kind of look at and sanitize the inputs that are coming in. So we're going to do this actually in our PHP script itself. So I'm going to jump back over to Sublime Text, where I have my, in this case, the login p8.php page. And so in here, we're going to particularly look right now just at this username. The password. I'm not going to say you shouldn't sanitize it too, you probably should, but it's a little bit safer because remember that by the time it actually reaches the database, we have encrypted it. So it's not going to look anything like, even if someone wrote actual SQL query code in there, it's never going to actually look like that going into the database. However, the username is actually like, as we see right in this line here, is literally going into, is using the exact um, form input that we put in there. And so this is where we're really primed for if someone put in some bad code, Right there, it would, they would be able to control our database however they wanted to. So what we need to do is we need to take this line right here, and instead of just taking it in as is, we need to run a couple of checks on it. The first one we're going to do is actually right when we create it, instead of just getting the post from the form, we're going to run a quick, um, we're going to run a quick method instead. And so this is we're going to say here is my SQLI underscore real escape string. And this is, uh, again, something built into PHP that looks through a string that's being passed into it and is based on a current uh, database connection as well. And it will say, is there anything in here that looks like it could run SQL um, queries? And if it does, it'll strip that out. And so how we run this particular method, it takes two parameters. The first one is a MySQLI connection, which we have up here. That's that con, so we'll pass that in, so dollar sign con. And then we pass in the actual form field that we want. So in this case, it's that dollar sign underscore post. And we just call this name. Make sure we end that with a semicolon. And that's the first step. The second one we can do, just for an added layer of security, is we're gonna, we're gonna actually create another variable here called username clean. And this is going to run through a second method that will also specifically strip, strip out anything that doesn't match the type of string that we're looking for. 
So this one is just called filter, oops, filter variable, filter var. And in this one, we pass in the string that we want. So in this case, username. And then we pass in a couple of different things. The first one is, a, is what kind of filter we're doing. So in this case, we're gonna do what's called filter underscore sanitize underscore string. What's nice is that you can also filter for things like email, where say you do still want like at signs and periods, things like that. You can pass in, there's a number of filters. I'll include a link in the description to the documentation to this particular uh, method so that you can see um, what the different filters are that you can add. Then there's also what are called flags, which are additional filters that you can run. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say filter flag strip low and then I'm going to add this single bar, which is sort of like sort of like saying and um, in this case, or uh, technically or in this case, so that if, if anything matches the strip low or the second flag that we're going to add, um, those will happen as well. So we'll say filter flag strip high. And what these basically do is every character in um, what's called ASCII code has an actual numeric value to it, anywhere between the basic ones are anywhere between 0 and 128. Anything below 32 are like special characters like null or um, line breaks, things like that. And so filter flag strip low will check for any of those characters and will strip them out. Filter flag strip high goes anything above 128, which is basically all of your, um, within, one, within 0 to 128 is also all of your um, alphabetical characters, numerical characters, and basic punctuation. So any special like international characters or other things like that will be above 128. And we're saying in this case here, if there are any of those, strip those out as well. Once again, we will put a semicolon there. And at this point, we actually have a couple of options of what we could do. We could at this point take a look and see, does username clean match the username? Did the person put in something that was an appropriate clean um, input? And if it, they don't match, then we know that something funky went on. We may just want to return an error right here. So we could say if username doesn't equal username clean, and then we could echo an error much like we did down here to say, hey, you've put in something weird, um, so we're not gonna let this run. Alternatively, we could just run this now with username clean, in which case, you know, it might not work because obviously they're not putting in a normal username, they put in some funky characters, things like that, and it might just return um, a failed query because there wasn't anything matching it. But we at least know at this point that we've done our due diligence, we've checked out that that, that uh, field is now okay, and we can um, run that query without worrying about it really affecting our database. Once again, this is just the first step in protecting your database from SQL injection. There's um, this idea again of PHP data objects, PDO. I'll put um, a link to that documentation as well so you can learn more about that. Um, as well, you probably wanna put some sort of um, user interface into your game itself saying things like, hey, this field should only really use alphanumeric characters or you know, your password should have these certain things just to make your, this process easier for your um, users as well. But once you've done all that, um, this is just really gonna help improve security for your database and um, give your players a better um, experience, particularly when your database doesn't get hacked and destroyed and players lose all of their progress. So thanks again for watching. This is going to wrap up this series for now. Um, if there's, um, if you have any additional questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer them as best I can. This is obviously a very deep field with a lot of, um, a lot further you can go down into it. So I encourage you to check that out further. But in the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.